Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety, and panic attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. If you like what I do, please leave a review on my website. Um, maybe a written one or a video review if you fancy it. Uh, and if you'd like to help towards the running costs of this free service, then please go to my website as well. Plus, all of my recordings are on there, available to stream for free and to download. So you know what I was thinking? You know what I was thinking today? What I was thinking is... What's the question? Do we give ourselves enough credit for our successes? Now, of course, I can't talk for you. I can't sort of answer that question. But what's your, what's your answer to that? Do you give yourself enough credit for your successes? And some people may answer, well, what successes? I'm not successful. I haven't got a job. I haven't got uh, any money. I uh, Whatever. But doesn't it depend on how you perceive success? Now... If you've overcome a very difficult period in your life, if you've got through it, got through the other end, then isn't that a success? If you've had an anxiety attack and you've managed to get through it, which you clearly have because you're listening to this. That's a success. So that's really, that's the point of this recording. And I don't know your personal stories. I don't know you know, everybody's life and what they've been through. But I do sometimes wonder that, well, question, I suppose myself in some ways, the focus, what do I actually focus on? Do I focus on the successes I've had or do I focus on the the illnesses, the problems because um, I, I don't think it's necessarily a case of just focusing on the success but flipping it on its you know, on its flipping it on its back or on its belly whichever way you want to do it turn it upside down and start looking at what do you class as failures Now, I used to class myself as a failure because I lost my job due to anxiety and stress and depression and stuff like that. I used to class myself as a failure, and sometimes I do still, because I've got no money. I'm 49, I got, I don't know, 40 pound in the bank. 49 years to get to get 40 that's less than a pound a year that I've saved during my life but that doesn't make me a failure it just means that I've got 40 pound in the bank it doesn't have to have an emotional connection you could take a positive view say well I've got £40. That's £40 more than I'd have if I had nothing in the bank. Or 
or I could look at it and say, well, I might have £40 in a bank in 2002. I was earning quite good money, but I was ill. Having panic attacks constantly for quite a long period of time. And I would have given any money in the world to get rid of them. So, what is success? What is failure? And some people can be quite harsh, not only to others, but to themselves as well. Classing someone as a failure because they don't own their own home. But then they're going to be classing themselves as a failure if they don't own their own home. Or if they don't have the correct kind of job. Or if they don't have the right a number of children. Or the, you know, the kind of car they think they should be driving. Why kind of moving away from the material aspects of this? idea of success and failure and I'm not going to focus on failure I'm going to focus on success our successes the fact that we're alive is a success story in itself there's lots of people that aren't Billions of people that aren't alive anymore. But we are. I can walk. And you sort of say, well, how is that a success? It's not something you've done. Not something you've uh, created yourself. It's not something that you've uh, set your mind out to do. Well... I know I can't get into the mindset of that but guaranteed everybody that's walking today put a hell of a lot of effort into learning to walk as a toddler as a young child or someone I mean you've only got to look at someone that's had gone through an injury a physical or brain injury where they have to learn to walk again It's really, really hard. But we went through that as a child. And some people might say, yeah, but you don't have to go through the the emotional trauma that an adult would learn in. What are toddlers other than one big bundle of emotions continuously churning around? moving from one like intense anger hatred to laughter to love kindness you've only got to see a toddler the frustration on their face when they're trying to walk and they keep falling on their bum but they don't give up so we are all success stories And a lot of it is due to our own attempts, our own work that we've done. Just because we don't remember it, because we were only two or whatever age children start walking, we can talk. And you might start thinking, oh, am I going to go through every single bodily function? Is he going to start talking about farting in a minute? We can fart, therefore we're a success. No, I might come to farting later, if I choose, but the fact that we can talk is an amazing thing. Because you think, if you'd have been born anywhere in the world... 
you'd be speaking that language. And that's, that's a successful brain, that's a successful mind. We all have the ability to speak any language. Because if you'd have been born in China, if you were born in America, if you had been born in China, you'd speak Chinese or whatever local language there was. Because I know there's different languages. Or if you were born in France, you'd speak French. And don't worry, I'm not going to go through every country. But that's an amazing feat, really. And it's something we learn. Writing, being able to write, is something that we've learned. It's not something that comes naturally. It's not something that you have to learn, you have to be taught it. And it's, it's hard work, but it's fun when you're a kid. You know, when you're little, it's, if it's enjoyable. So we are success stories, all of us. And I don't want to sort of come all over Pollyanna but actually there is something to be said on not just looking on the brighter side or to be positive about yourself but look at the reality it's not like just make belief I just waved my hands in the air by the way just so you know doing a little uh, marking that word out in the air it's not make belief it's reality you are a success. You're a success story. You have skills that other people don't have. You know how to do some things that millions and millions of people are unable to do naturally. Some of those skills and talents you may not be aware of yet. We all have abilities. We all have special abilities that kind of shine. Whether it's art, drawing, painting, dancing, languages, um, driving a car. Some people are just brilliant at driving. They just some people are great at making movies. Some people are great. At at conversation they just shine in different ways and we all have a talent well I say we all have talents but we all have at least one thing that's just phenomenal that we're really really good at that we really really shine and we find almost comes naturally although hard work may also be required in order to tune it and to to get the best result and to be the best that you can be in that particular field whatever it is you may be the best drawer naturally but you still may need to learn you know how to draw you may still need to practice to become the best that you can be or to enjoy the process so from a I suppose from a stress anxiety panicky perspective perhaps it's more of a self esteem issue so instead of 
uh, feeling, oh, I'm just this. Instead of putting ourselves in a category of, I'm just an anxious person, that's it. Reframing it to, I'm a person, I'm a successful person, I can do some pretty amazing things. I'm talented. This is something for you to say about yourself. I'm not just bragging about me. I'm just saying this is something for you to say about yourself. You're a talented person. And you have had anxiety issues in the past. But you're not the anxiety. There's more to you than that. And you know that anyway. You don't need some stranger like me talking to you on a podcast telling you that because you already know it but do you remember it do you remember how amazing you are do you remember all the times that you've helped other people do you remember all the things that you've learnt to do throughout your life which proves that you are a success. And I think there's a, there's a degree of trust that may be useful in this situation. To trust that you have made a difference you've been successful in making a difference in other people's lives even though you may never ever know about it you may never ever hear or see any sign of that but nevertheless have trust that you really have made a difference as well as those times that you remember I'm talking about also those times that you don't remember times that you couldn't know about because it might have just been a kind word a kind smile maybe you let someone cross the road you stopped let them cross the road And actually that made a big difference to their day and to their life. We affect other people. Just like other people affect us. Of course there's ways to, you know, limit there is damage limitation available when dealing with people so that their negativity doesn't affect us too much or if it does affect us we can reduce that effect that it had and just move on with our lives remembering that that's just what's going on with them it had nothing to do with us. So how would your life be different? How will it be different as you think about the fact that you are a success? And to maybe celebrate those successes. And I realise that it might be weird to say, well, I'm going to celebrate being able to walk 
it wouldn't be weird if um, someone had been in a car crash and uh, had to relearn to walk. Now that would be a celebration worthy of a party. That's, you know, that is a celebration. But because for most of us it was such a long time ago and we were, you know, little children learning to walk, we just take it for granted and don't really give it any thought. So that might not be something that you'd want to kind of celebrate but it may be something worth acknowledging that actually you have been successful many, many, many times in the past. And getting in touch with that success, that feeling of success, that maybe celebrating the times that you've been successful perhaps in the recent past can allow your confidence to grow can allow your self esteem to improve or as I would probably put it allow you to get in touch with reality a bit more because the reality is you're an amazing person. That's the reality. There's all this negativity in the press, on the TV and all this stuff, trying to make out that humans are mainly horrible, blah, blah, all that stuff, which is untrue. Most people are nice if they get the opportunity to be nice. Most people don't want hassle, they don't want drama. But also, probably most people would like to have acceptance, maybe some kind of acknowledgement, to be seen, to be heard, to feel important to feel needed and not everybody feels that way not everybody feels that they are so maybe we can start aiming those things that we'd like to have from other people perhaps and start giving it to ourselves So I can sit here in my flat all week long waiting for someone to bring me food and they won't until I get off my bum go into the kitchen and prepare myself from food from food, some food or go to the shops and get the shopping in the same way instead of waiting for someone to tell you that actually you're a pretty amazing person. Perhaps remind yourself. Perhaps think of times in the past when you've helped other people. And instead of thinking, oh, they didn't appreciate it, they didn't do anything back, they don't help me when I need them, because that's just, basically being a child isn't it if we be an adult and realise that helping other people doesn't need anything back because ultimately you're the one that gains the most from doing it might seem a bit weird but I really feel that when you help someone else there's 
something changes with inside you. Something changes, almost like a healing, uh, a peacefulness. So that kindness that's directed outside towards someone else almost kind of rebounds but with a much stronger feeling it gives you something that maybe you're not aware of gives you strength that maybe you didn't realise you had resilience the ability to keep going the ability to deal with whatever life presents to you the ability to keep bouncing back the ability to laugh and to enjoy being you and to appreciate being you the ability to acknowledge your own successes instead of focusing on failures focusing on the successes focusing on how well you're doing focusing on the fact that you're doing something to help yourself I mean the one benefit well it's probably quite a few benefits and it's a weird sentence to put together but there's benefits to anxiety and stress in a sense gets you you get to know yourself better you almost get to kind of it almost forces you to stand back and maybe stand still for a bit to calm down and look around and notice how you're feeling and realize that perhaps changes are necessary in your life in order for you to move forward to have the type of life that you want for yourself type of life where you feel more relaxed you feel calmer more at ease within yourself more confident in your own ability to deal with life in a way that feels almost pleasurable even even those difficult times can you can get a sense of accomplishment and a sense of success because you've got through it. A difficult conversation, you've got through it. A hard day at work, you got through it. Even as much as anxiety, an anxiety attack, you got through it. You came out the other end. And if you came out the other end that time, you come out the other end next time. And maybe you start to see where the other end is. And you might think to yourself, or it might even come unconsciously, it might come that you think, well, I know where the end is. It's like you know where the door is. So you might as well just go out. If you think about it, you think like an anxiety attack. Because we've got all this new technology now. So you can get, uh, sl- you got, get smart light bulbs. So you think of an anxiety attack, like a, 
the light, someone switches the light off. But it's in a room and you don't know where the light switch is. So you're kind of looking around, you're touching things, you and it's it's just uh, not a particularly pleasant experience. That's an understatement, isn't it? And then maybe eventually you find the light, the light switch, which then you can see where the door is, and you open the door and go out. And you're out of the other end. But then maybe your unconscious mind can start to fit a smart light bulb in each room in your mind so that when that fogginess when that darkness just happens instead of searching around each wall and you know try not to trip up over things and all the you know the tension that arises because of that you just say light bulb on light comes on then you just see where the door is open it and go out of the other end a lot quicker so it's just a bunch of ideas and sometimes you know, sometimes I see stuff, or I read something, or I hear, I listen to audios, and um, quite like Audible, and sometimes I'll, I'll read, or I'll read something in a book, and it just keeps playing over and over in my mind, not in a kind of a horrible way, but just, oh, and there's a feeling, I can feel it now actually, the feeling on my shoulders and my the top of my back my shoulders the back of my neck my arms across my face it's just um, a lightness almost um, tuning in to something that I perhaps don't understand but at the same time feels really nice and familiar it feels pleasant uh, almost like a freedom so maybe I suppose it's I think like, you know when you were a kid and I used to be if I used to visit places when I was a kid and I'd be living I'd be sleeping in a, a, a room that I didn't recognise like I didn't know, I knew it was a, a room, but I didn't know the outlay of the room. And there'd be a wardrobe and, you know, things like, and it'd be dark and I c couldn't really make out what things were because it wasn't my regular bedroom. So I'd switch the light on, have a look around. And then I'd switch the light off again. And every now and then I'd switch the light on and I'd look around again and I, I just get my kind of get a memory like a little map of the room then I'd switch the light off but knowing that I could switch that light off on at any time gave me that sense of security and safety which is what I needed I was a very young child and at the time I just being somewhere unfamiliar being a it's just like being in a situation that's unfamiliar it's nice to know that you can turn that light on so that you can see your way clear through any kind of stress or anxiety that's always available light bulb on 
or relaxation on. It's almost like a superpower. Is it a Fantastic Four or a Fantastic Five or Fantastic Four? Where there's the one that turns into the hu he's a human torch and he says it's flame on and he turns into the human torch and flies around. He's like the temperature of the sun or something. Flame on. Relaxation on. Calm on. Light bulb on. Safety on. Now, I'm going to leave you with that, those ideas, and I shall speak to you very soon. So thank you for listening. Just remember, I've got other websites, ever, so other podcasts for insomnia, sleep, Let Me Boy to Sleep podcast, Deep Sleep Whisper, Hypnosis podcast, and what's the other one? Sleep Hypnosis weekly and a few other like, like chronic pain and all kinds of things so plus this one of course which is groovy so thank you for listening remember remember actually remember this remember to start thinking start noticing the things that you are actually successful at and you can celebrate that success. Look around your home, maybe things that you've done, things that you've created. It might be, uh, you know, for example, it's, it's a little thing, but I put a bracket on the wall for my television. Now, I'm not a Mr. DIY home maintenance kind of person it's, it's well out of my uh, comfort zone and I had the bracket for about four months sitting in a box before I actually attached it to the wall and I'm ever so pleased with it really you know pleased with myself because I did it because it goes the idea of doing it did cause I, I felt stressed about it I'll be honest but then I did it and it's a it's kind of a success I put it way too high up at the beginning and now I've moved it down a bit because I was hurting my neck I was literally looking up at the clouds There's lots of those versions of successes in your life. But lots of small things can up, add up to a big thing, as we know. So give yourself some time to maybe think about those successes in your life and get in touch with the, the confidence that comes with that the self-belief that comes with that and grows. So remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.